The hunt for the next professional MasterChef champion is on. And these six chefs all believe they have what it takes to win the title. Now they face two challenges set by Judge Greg Wallace and two of Britain's best chefs, Monica Galletti and Michelin star Marcus Waring. I've been cooking longer than a lot of the competitors have been alive, so hopefully I've got enough tricks up my sleeve where I can keep impressing. I feel very lucky that I'm here at uh, such a young age and hopefully I can show the judges there's a reason why I'm here. I'm excited, can't wait to see what chefs we've got lined up outside of the door. I want to see skill, I want to taste great flavours, I want to see some exceptional cookery. The bar has been set very high. This is the last week of the heats. It's the skills test. Monica, what are you going to ask them to do? I would like our chefs to make us a classic dish, which is called an artichoke berry ghoul. I'm very, very fond of an artichoke. Mm. Very fond of an artichoke. If the artichokes are prepared properly, they're going to be the star of the presentation of this dish. It's a very interesting challenge, this, because uh, I think there's a lot of chefs in the back there that will have never come across the preparation of an artichoke. 50 minutes artichoke barry ghoul. That's right. All right, off you go. The first thing I'm going to do is to prepare our lovely artichokes. I've just trimmed down the stalk and I'm just removing some of the, the artichoke petals which will make it easier to turn or to prep. I'm just going to, to cut off that there and then just simply run the knife around it as I turn the artichoke gently. I think it's important to, to peel down the actual stem, isn't it? Because that's quite yeah, bitter. Quite bitter. That's the actual artichoke, the thing that's forming in there, the inedible thing, the hairy thing. It's the part that's inedible, it's not pleasant. So I'm adding just some lemon into the water just to stop the artichokes from discolouring. It's the one vegetable that you see in kitchens and in restaurants that you know straight away when it's been badly prepared. First thing that stands out is the colour. When it goes all grey and dark and sure. dark brown, a bit like your jacket. Sure. <laughs> Now my artichoke's prepared, onto the rest of the dish. So I've got some nice azaz bacon here for some ladles. We want to make sure there's no bones and the skin as well, we also want to, to take off. It's an interesting challenge, it's, a, it's an interesting skill, but I think we're going to be looking for the core basics of great preparation. Uh, uniformity in, in the vegetable chopping and then the, the way in which they cook. I've got my artichokes, I've got the onion and the celery. I'm just going to sweat them off. I don't want to colour the actual celery and the onion, we just want to get them translucent. Lots of nice fresh thyme in there. Here we're going with a splash of wine. Why is the lid on? I need this to cook very quickly, so it's going to, to keep the heat going back into the pan. Ah. I'm just adding a little bit of stock at a time. As I see if the sauce is getting too thick, you need to top it up, let it help to, to cook the artichokes. Bacon is in and a bit of roughly chopped parsley to finish it, and we're ready to serve. Oh, wow. A bit more of the cooking juice. And there we have it, an artichoke barrigal. That's just lovely. I don't expect our chefs to present a dish as pretty as that. However, I do expect them to be able to prepare and serve a yeah. good quality artichoke. The first to take on Monica's skills test is 24-year-old private chef, Lewis. From a young age, I've always wanted to be a chef uh, due to my mum having her own catering business and just seeing her cook. I love being a private chef because it gives me the opportunity to 
do my own food and bring my own ideas and I love making people smile by putting food on a plate. You've got to go in with absolute confidence, otherwise you're not going to do well in IB, so fingers crossed. So Lewis, what I would like you to make for us today is a dish called an artichoke barigul. Have you heard of that before? No. Nope. An artichoke barigul is a very rustic Provencal dish. The artichokes is the, the key ingredient here. 15 minutes, off you go. Thank you. So Lewis, so what's the plan for the dish? Uh, so I'm going to sauté the onion, bacon, artichokes off, put a bit of butter in there, a little bit of white wine, reduce that down, and then cook it out in some stock. Did you work in the one restaurant before you went out on your own? Uh, no, I've worked in about two restaurants and a couple of gastro pubs. Right. Yeah, and just felt like it was time to sort of go out on my own. Lewis, you have five minutes left. All done? Yep. Probably had about a minute left. OK, cool. Initially, you should have started with preparing the artichokes. They're going to take the longest to cook in this dish, but you have sort of just cut them in, into four. They should have cooked down, but looking at the way they're discolouring now and they've gone black, they really haven't, OK? Should we have a taste? Lewis, the artichoke clearly isn't cooked properly, still got a crunch to it, and then the, the, some of those leaves that should have been taken off have got a chew to it. I love the flavours of the bacon, anything with bacon works for me, but so there's a bit on the bland side. Artichoke preparation is all about stopping the artichoke from going black. Yes. Speed, accuracy, understanding what an artichoke is, and you quite clearly don't. Yeah. Listen, you, you, you've made mistakes, but you presented us with an edible dish with some nice flavour. I don't think it's a disaster at all. I'm very interested to see what you cook in the next round. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't know what to do with the dish. I'd never heard of it. So I just had to give it my best shot. And I think the nerves got the better of me. So. Next in is Michael head chef at a fine dining restaurant in York. I trained at the Royal Air Force Catering Academy, which is, is an amazing thing to look back on. It's an experience you don't really get in, in the outside world. Left the Air Force and, and worked my way around restaurants up and down the UK. Hopefully in five years time, I'll be, I'll be heading up my own restaurant with a team of young chefs. I'll hopefully have some accolades to go along with that. One can only dream, really. Service. How are you, Michael? Nervous. <laughs> That's normal. What I would like you to make for us today is an artichoke colour barigul. You've prepared artichokes before? Once a while ago, so I need to uh, refresh, refresh really refresh quickly. My memory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Michael, 15 minutes. Off you go. Okay. Breathe. I need to breathe at some point as well. Uh, I just need to figure out how it goes together and, and put something together in a pan, in a plate. Very nervous. <laughs> the key to a successful artichoke dish, of course, is an artichoke. Yeah, I'm going to get to that in a second. Halfway. 
Okay, okay chef, so you've yep. got seven minutes left. So what's the plan, Michael? I'm going to get a little bit of colour onto the, onto the pancetta and the artichokes. I'm going to add the stock, let it simmer, and hopefully I'm going along the right lines. Right, you've got one and a half minutes. You've got to think about putting yeah. something on a plate, yeah. actually. All done. When I look at the dish and your preparation of your ingredients, it's not great. Your bacon's still got the rind on, the artichokes still got the outer skins on. These need removing, just prepping properly. Let's call it a tough day in the kitchen. No one should need to, to wrestle with a plate of artichoke to try and find what's edible. All I can say is you have really got to come back fighting in the next round. I really do. You've got to dig deep into your chef's resources and you've got to come up with something. You can't allow yourself to fall to pieces. Michael, we expect to see a different chef in the next round. All right, mate? There'll be a different one coming through them doors, I promise you. Off you go. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bag of nerves. God, could we not give them a large whiskey or something? <laughs> the nerves just took over me and wouldn't let me think straight or think logically. The scariest thing I've ever done in my life. And I was in the military for five years. <laughs> Another contestant with a military background is 28-year-old sous chef Graham. I've been a chef in the army now for six years, but in that time I haven't just been here. I've been Afghanistan, Falklands, Kenya, Morocco, um, so I get to travel a bit as well. It can be tough cooking away. Um, you know, the temperatures in the tent alone can be hit 60, 70 degrees without the burners even on. Yeah, I'll always want to be the best, and I'll always want to try and be up there with the best. As long as I get past the skills test, I'll be happy. That's one point that I'll be proper nervous about. Graham, today I would like you to make us a dish called an artichoke barrigal. Have you prepared artichokes before? Um, I've done it once, I think, years ago. Let's hope that uh, you will uh, remember. You will have 15 minutes, Graham, to make and serve this dish. Okay. Graham, 15 minutes. Best of luck. You're halfway, Graham. So what sort of cooking do, do you do at the moment? I work up in the office's mess, so I could be feeding for 20 or 30 people, um, or it could be in a field kitchen, feeding four, five, six hundred plus. Do you get the opportunity to do more refined cookery then? I try, but I can only do it to a certain extent, and that's why I ended up applying to come here, just to give myself another challenge. Good for you. Right. You've got five minutes left, Chef. Well done. Graham, you've clearly not known what the dish was, 
but you've also not known how to prepare the artichokes. You have gone and removed just about all the edible parts of, of, of the baby artichoke. Even the stem, there's not a lot that you can eat on there, but if you keep that stem on, you know, it's perfectly edible. You didn't know the dish and we get that. It's just the processes that you, that you went through and you just look like you're in trouble all the way through. I really like the fact that you put the, the artichokes into lemon water um, to stop them from discolouring, which is great. Too much of that artichoke on there is inedible. Uh, however, you won't be the first chef to get off through a bad start. What you do next is vitally important. You're in the army, Graham. Just come back fighting. Graham, we'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you. As soon as I walked in and I say not a choke, I was like, oh no, here we go. You know, there's loads of people crumble at this stage, so it's just a matter of picking myself up now and getting through the next part as well. Monica, the chefs have had a go at yours. Marcus, this is your turn. What are you going to get the chefs to make? This is a test with a little bit of difference to it. I'm going to ask our chefs to cook a hot lamb sandwich and serve it with a pea mint salsa. Yes. So we have got here a neck end of lamb. First skill is the butchery. The rest really is open to interpretation. At the end of the day, what I'm asking them to make is a, is a lamb sandwich, but I want to see a little bit of imagination. They should assess the, the piece of meat they have to work with, and that is the key mm. starting point. How long? 15 minutes, <laughs> off we go. What I'm doing is I'm taking the eye of the meat off the bone. We don't need this flat for this dish. We just look for the eye of the meat. I don't know whether our chefs will come across uh, lamb neck before. It's not a popular joint. Now, I haven't had lamb neck in a restaurant for about 10 years. I want to retain a little bit of this fat because for me, there's a, there's a huge amount of flavor running through the meat here as well. But it has a, a really good, good meaty lamb flavor. So it's good at this point for the chef just to look for that little bit of maybe too much sinew. So just by knocking it out, I'm just going to very, very lightly flour the lamb. So garlic, a nice sprig of rosemary, sprigs of thyme. I'll meet in the pan. Just got a nice bit of colour on the meat. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to deglaze with a little bit of malt vinegar. And then our lamb sauce. So lift our lamb out. The sauce is still reducing down. Fewer things in life please me as much as brown lamb. You take the sauce. Straight over the top. So just leave that sitting nicely resting. And it's not going to be undercooked because this cut of meat will be too chewy. You need to take it more to pink to well done rather than rare. I'm just going to use this rustic white bread. Olive oil. So just massage the oil with some garlic, so you get a little hint of garlic just coming through the bread. So now, we go on to our pea salsa. Mint and pea salsa, that's where they get to play. Great food, doesn't have to be complicated. So I'm just chopping a little shallot, chilli, and I've got some frozen peas. If we were going to make a pea puree in a restaurant or a pea soup, I guarantee that most of the top chefs would probably use frozen peas. They just have a better flavour, a, a, a sweetness to them. I'm going to sprinkle our mint in there. They want that lovely aroma of mint sauce, and that's why I'm adding malt vinegar. These are classic, time-honoured British flavours. That's right. Lamb and mint and pea. And now we can start to bring our lamb sandwich together. So we just layer pieces of lamb. That's a packed sandwich. Proper sandwich. It's on. Right. And that's got your name written all over it, Greg. That's a bit of me, that is, Chef. So there we have it. A hot lamb sandwich with a pea and mint salsa. Fabulous.
Why are you two not talking? Really happy right now, so just stop talking to me. Make another one. Well, Monica finishes your sandwich, should we ask the chefs to come and have a go? Yeah, let's do that. First up is 44-year-old senior chef lecturer, Gary, from Glasgow. Working with young chefs is an amazing job and an amazing opportunity to inspire the next generation of, of chefs. It's something I'm really passionate about and it's something I really, really enjoy. It's not a job to me, it's, you know, wake up and I'm happy to be going to my work. I'm, I'm lucky in that respect. As a lecturer, I feel duty-bound to keep my own um, standards. And I think I'm under a wee bit more pressure because of what I do for a job. See, most chefs go back to kitchens with six chefs in it. I'm coming back to 600 students, so I have to do well. Right, Gary, I'm going to give you 15 minutes to give us the best lamb sandwich you've ever made. Off you go. So, Gary, you've done a lot of butchering. I've done, I've done a wee bit, yeah. Relatively happy to see a lovely piece of meat on the board. I wouldn't mind three hours, though, because I normally braise it. So I'm just going to leave a wee bit of fat on there. Smashing. Whee! Get some flavour in there. <laughs> yeah. Gary, what did you do before you were a lecturer? I was executive chef of large restaurant groups. So I used to design menus and restaurants and that sort of thing. Gary, you've got five minutes left. Just want to get a wee bit of heat through the lamb, just a little bit, just to take the edge off it. Gary, you, you've got 90 seconds to get us a sandwich up, please. All done? All done. Nick of time? Nick of time. Overall, love watching you work. The only thing is, you know, the lamb's just slightly under. But having said that, I'd still eat it. I like the idea of the mustard on the bread, and I like your, your peas, the taste of the mint. However, that lamb is too undercooked for me. It's a tasty sandwich, that's what matters. You try to marinate the lamb, so I've got bits of the garlic that have stuck to it. Delicious. Love the heat that the mustard has brought to it. Some of the lamb is undercooked, but like Marcus, I'd eat it too. Actually, we have eaten it. <laughs> For the first time, we got a meal in, and Greg did it. Yeah, yeah, that's quite rare. Very. I'm very, very happy with that for a first uh, test in the kitchen. Not a bad job. Well done, Gary. Very good. Uh, listen, we're smiling and happy because I can tell these two are happy. And you know why they're happy? Because I know they believe that you are a very competent chef. So well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Obviously, the lamb was a wee bit under for uh, Greg, but Marcus's comments were uh, amazing. You know, it was just a great, great experience for the first time in the, in the MasterChef kitchen. Next to face Marcus's skills test is Nigel, who is head chef at a pub restaurant in Bristol. The type of restaurant we are is modern British. I design the menus, everything from the cost for the food to come through the door onto the plate is all my responsibility. And I train my team. We're very close, like a little family. Within six months of opening, uh, we were lucky to win one rosette and ran upstairs. Uh, I think I kissed all the chefs. Yeah, it was a great, brilliant day. I think to be a good chef and what makes me a good chef is the constant learning, the pushing myself and pushing my team and not to accept second best. I'd like you to make for us a lamb sandwich. 
with a pea and mint salsa. OK. 15 minutes, off you go. How long have you been a chef, Nigel? I've uh, been a chef for 17 years. Various establishments and different types of cuisine, or different standards of cuisine. Mm. You seem very comfortable. Only on the outside. What's the secret of a very good sandwich? Freshness, well seasoned, balance of flavour, and right now, food that you like. What's in the bowl with the chilies, Nigel? Oh, there's some mint in there and some oil. Mint and oil? Use that for my salsa. I'll just put a little bit of heat there just for a bit of background. You're halfway. We've got over two minutes left. What are you going to do with it? I wanted to add a little bit of depth of flavour to that. A little bit of acidity in there will cut through the pea, I think. Right, you've got a minute. OK. So let's get amongst it, shall we? Yep. Are you done? Yes, I am, very much. A couple of things on your butchery. The best part of lamb is the fat. And you take it all away, you've took it all away. You're left with some lean meat, which is great, but the fat just helps to, to keep the meat moist uh, and it also just imparts fabulous flavour. Overall, it's a good attempt. I hope it tastes good. Nigel, the lamb does lack flavour, the peas been better, broken down. Everything just feels flat and, and just sort of looks nice, but you're thinking, I hope that tastes as good as it looks, and unfortunately it doesn't. The lamb's perfectly cooked for me. I'm just lacking a little bit of seasoning on it, and I'm lacking the sharpness of vinegar inside the pea and mint salsa. It's not a bad job at all. There are just a couple of little easy touches that would have made it a lot better. Nigel, the lamb's nice and pink, but it needs a bit of love. That sauce you dropped it in and, and is gone, it's, it's sort of just disappeared. See you soon. See you soon. Thank you. He moves around the kitchen with the confidence of a pro chef, but that sandwich is disappointing. I did OK. Uh, was it my cooking? No. Can I do better? Yes. My signature dish is going to blow them away. Hopefully. Last to take Marcus's skills test is 21-year-old junior sous chef Rosanna, who works in a Michelin-starred restaurant in Birmingham. I always wanted to be a chef, you know, food's a massive part of my life. I grew up on a farm, so it's all it's all around me. Food is just like my life basically. I love the pressure of it, you know, you're coming in and uh, the adrenaline rush you get during service, and I, I just love cooking for people. I'm a bit scared <laughs> of Marcus and Monica, so it should, it should be interesting. Hopefully I'll be able to keep calm and cook as well as I possibly can. Rosanna, welcome. Hello. I'm okay. going to give you 15 minutes, Rosanna. Yep. Off you go. Okay. How long have you been a chef, Rosanna? For about six years, since I was 15.
Chef, you've had five minutes. Thank you. Do you have ambitions? <laughs> yeah, a lot. Obviously, you know, I know I've got a lot to learn and I'm, I'm very young, um, but I just want to be the best that I can be. You're halfway. You've got seven minutes left. Thank you. Are you done? Yeah. <laughs> you know what, Rosanna, you're 21 years old. Uh, you've come into a professional master chef, and I think at the end of the day, you've really done a fabulous attempt with this challenge. That's yours. Ah, splendid, splendid. Rosanna, you know, I really like the fact that you've used the jus in the sauce to go with the meat. That's exactly what I did. Um, the vinegar in the, in the salsa is absolutely great. I'd have maybe just up the, the seasoning a little bit more, but I think you did a good job. Rosanna, that was a nice lamb sandwich. As you can see, I've eaten all mine. I'd have to say, you know, a bit more seasoning if I have to find a fault, but you've done a great job. I like your sandwich. You've got a real sharp and minty, Pea salsa, your lamb is soft and coated in a rich sauce. Rosanna, not very happy. Monica's just stolen the last piece <laughs> of lamb off of my bit of sandwich, which I think <laughs> demonstrates how good we all think it is. Rosanna, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Off you go. I'll have a bit more. That's very nice. Very good. That's the most nervous I've, I've ever been cooking. I made a lot of sandwiches before, but never in front of uh, Monica or Marcus. <laughs> in a brief summary, I would say the sandwiches were generally good and the artichokes were generally disappointing. Not one of them prepared an artichoke properly and that alone exposed the, a weakness in them and, and so they were self-conscious with their cooking. Even though we had a bit of a disappointing start with the artichoke skills test, I think we've got reason to be optimistic going in to the signature dishes. I'm always excited about the signature dish round. This skills test is about them getting rid of their nerves and then we get to see the real personality in the chef when they're cooking their own food. Welcome back. Now is your chance to really make a mark. This for us is exciting. We can't wait to see what you've come up with. At the end of this test, three of you are going to be leaving the competition. I would really love to see a battle in the kitchen today, fighting for that place in the next round. You have 90 minutes. Cook your hearts out. Off you go. I've got to fight the urge to, to be nervous and to panic and just concentrate on what I'm doing. I went into the skills test like Pee Wee Herman. I need to come with my signature dish like Muhammad Ali. Tell me what you're cooking for us. Uh, I'm doing a duo of Yorkshire lamb, uh, making Imam Bialdi, uh, hung Greek yogurt, mint oil, uh, roasted Roscoff onion. You're going very Middle Eastern and North African with your flavours. I am indeed, yeah. It's a great dish that works really well together. 
and the, the flavours are something I really, really enjoy. Do you feel any better now? Because you look as nervous as you did when we saw you <laughs> earlier. I'm not dying inside anymore. I'm, <laughs> I've got a big point to prove. I've got to prove that, that I belong here, that I belong running a kitchen, that, that I'm confident in what I do with my food. And hopefully this dish will showcase that. Right, Michael, looking forward to this dish. Thank you. Yeah. I look forward to, uh, to plating it for you. Thank you. I love the flavours that Michael is bringing to his signature dish, but it's just about refining all that and getting that balance of the spices and the aubergine and the textures uh, to serve with the lamb. For me, when lamb is served with spices, I almost expect it to be sort of slightly overcooked so that it absorbs the spices and the flavours that, he, that he's putting with it. Getting those positive feedback, you know, it's something to probably remember for the rest of your life and, and long may that continue. There's no way I'm going to take it easy. This is probably one of the hardest dishes I've ever had to put up, regardless of how little time you've got. Gary, how are you? Good, thanks. Great. OK, can you tell us about your menu today? Yeah, we're doing a sort of nose-to-tail um, rabbit dish. So we're going to bone out the loins. We're going to wrap that in a hazelnut mousse and then wrap that in pancetta. I'm going to French trim the best end and the legs are going to be braised and used for a chunky sauce. So that's going to sort of bring the dish together. Of all the dishes you could have done, why, why rabbit? Um, I think it's tough to cook. I think uh, you guys know that. And if I can pull it off, I think it would um, really help my chances of getting through to the next stage. You've deliberately picked something tricky because yep. we know it's tricky. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, there's only so far a bald head and glasses can carry you, you know? I know. That's why I grew the beard. <laughs> <laughs> I like the sounds of Gary's dish. I love even more the fact that Gary's using the whole rabbit to, to its full potential here. This is going to show a lot of skill, a lot of technique, and I think that's what Gary wants to do. When you're cooking rabbit, you've got to be on your A game, especially at this stage of the competition. So easy to overcook rabbit, so easy to get it wrong. I've got the passion and the love for food. That'll drive me through and hopefully smashing it like I should have done with the first time. Graham's using pork fillet as his main course. He's serving butternut squash, cold cannon, and pickled red cabbage. There's also a quail scotch egg going on the plate as well. So, wow, there's a lot going on here. And there's also going to be a beef sauce sitting with the dish as well. The beef sauce, if it's too strong, can overpower the whole dish. So we want some solid cooking from Graham today, and just hopefully everything goes well on the plate. What's this dish mean to you? Um, I, I wanted to try and do something different because I was trying to think outside the box and I thought everybody's going to go with beef, people's going to go with lamb, I'll go with pork. And I know pork's it's as good as meat as any, you know, and if it's done properly. You're a soldier first yeah. and, and a cook second? Yeah. So do, do you feel like you've got enough experience with what you've managed to get under your belt being in the army to, to be able to really compete here? Coming on to MasterChef has given me like the kick up the backside that I maybe need to, you know, give myself a new challenge and then you never know what could happen. Right, look forward to it, Graham. Good luck, Steph. mate. Thanks, Steve. I think in the next dish, I have to show my heart and my soul on that plate. If the, all the elements on the dish are cooked correctly, I think it will wow them. I think there's a lot of skill there. Um, it's like bringing summer on a plate. How are you, Nigel? I'm OK, thank you. Y your head chef? Uh, yes. Good team. Well, my wife is on my team. No way. Yes. Whereabouts is your wife in the team? Is she, is uh, she's she the chef head? Chef de party. Chef de party, right. Yes. Does she take kindly to you, to you telling you what to do? Uh, we work very well together. I think she tells me what to do quite a lot as well. My kind um, of woman. Tell me, what's your signature dish? My signature dish is a rack of Welsh lamb with a tapenade crust, uh, sauce choron, pea puree, and it's going to have tomato confit with it and it's going to have a black hood in arancini. Your, your flavours are eclectic. You're borrowing from different cultures. Is that you? Yes, I like to play an experiment. I like to cook what I like to eat, because I think if you enjoy what you cook and you eat what you cook, then you're always going to produce better food. OK, well then, we look forward to seeing the finished dish. Thank you very yeah. much. 
I like the flavors that Nigel is, is bringing into his lamb dish, the, the tomato, some, some of the olives through the, the tapenade. Not sure how the arancini is going to, to sit on this plate of food. You know, whether it's got a nice little garnish and whether it will really complement the, the dish as a whole. It's quite intriguing to use a sauce charon, hollandaise sauce that's been finished with tomato, with lamb. I've not had hollandaise with lamb before, so I'm really, really looking forward to see if this works. You've got 25 minutes left, all right? I can't wait to get back into the kitchen, cooking my signature dish. I've practiced this dish a lot, so I don't see why anything could go wrong. <laughs> Lewis, tell me, what are you making for your signature dish? So I'm making fillet of beef. So I'm cooking the water bath with a mushroom and tarragon puree, potato fondant, tomato fondue, and then just finish with a light jus. Right, OK. Now, when I saw that beef go into that water bath, there was more than just beef in there. What else did you have in there? Um, she used it with beef fat, rosemary, thyme and some garlic. Just to get more flavour into it. Just surrounded it in fat? Yeah. OK, so it's cooking in a pool of fat? Yeah. Right. Why did you choose this dish in particular? Well, I love steak. Um, and it's sort of my take on like a beef chasseur or steak and chips because it's all the sort of ingredients which you'd have. You must have learned a lot from your mum. Did she teach you a lot? Yeah, just from a young age, being in the kitchen at home and helping her out, I've learned a huge amount. At the end of the day, I think I'm into cooking because of her. Who's the better cook out of you and mum? I'll leave her to watch it and she can answer that for herself. <laughs> beef fillet, potato fondant tomato fondue and a mushroom puree with tarragon. I love all the different ingredients. I just hope that it all works together. I hope that, that potato can hold all those wet elements of this dish. I'm very competitive. Probably doesn't seem like it at the moment because I'm so nervous, but I want to do well in this competition. I just need to calm down. <laughs> Rosanna, whatever you've got in that saucepan there is smelling amazing. How are you? I'm OK, yeah. I'm feeling a bit better than the skill test. <laughs> You're smiling and breathing? Yes. It's a start. <laughs> what is your dish? Lamb loin and sweet bread with asparagus and peas. Fine. Why this dish for your, for your signature? You know, they're all classic flavours that go together. Hopefully um, I can show you, you know, how passionate I am about this, this job and my, the industry and I just love what I do. How passionate are you about the industry? Uh, I've put 100% into it, and um, I'm going to keep doing that until I get where I want to be. Which is where? Uh, well, one day, hopefully, I'll be a head chef somewhere and have a team who um, are inspired and just enjoy what they're doing. You know, I, I love what I do. I've got a lot to learn, but um, I, just, I just love it. Rosanna's come back into this kitchen with some energy and she's confident and a bit more relaxed because she's cooking her own food and that's what we want to see. It's all about the cooking of the lamb, great garnish, fabulous lamb sauce and don't overcook those sweetbreads. You have got just over two minutes. You've got 15 seconds, that means it's finishing touches, please. That's it, time's up, stop. Well done, everybody. All right? Yeah, copy. Michael, up you come, please. Head chef Michael has prepared a duo of Yorkshire lamb with imam biyildi, roasted Roscoff onion, yogurt, mint oil, and an aubergine puree. I love that aubergine puree that you've made. I think with the yogurt, it's perfect. However, I've got some issues here in the way the fat is cooked on that one. It cooks more. And I think your rim ambiolvi is a little ferocious. It's a, it's a little rough on the back of the throat. The puree 
for me, is, is really intense in flavour. It's, it's really quite lovely, uh, and it's got the sweetness to it. And I do like it with the yoghurt, just like Greg does. The whole onion doesn't work, and I don't understand why it's there. So this, uh, you know, some ideas that I like, but I don't think the, the execution of, of everything on the plate has worked well. I like what you're thinking, and I, the warmth is big, and that's what's taking over the lamb. Now, if that heat of that aubergine had been sitting with some grilled chops and the charcoal grill, you'd have been onto a winner. Yeah. Definitely a real step up from when we last saw you yeah. in a virtual panic attack. I'm a bit on top of the world. I could have done better, but I could have done a whole lot worse. Graham is serving sous vide tenderloin of pork with cold cannon potato, a quail scotch egg, pickled red cabbage, parma ham crisp, black pudding, and a butternut squash puree, finished with whole grain sauce. Nice presentation, Graham. Very nice. And not as big and bulky as our thought. I really like the light touch that you have with this dish. It's, it's very, very good. The pork, I suppose for some people, would be on the underdone side. But because you cooked it in the water bath, it sort of makes it right and it's retained uh, the moisture of it. That sauce is massive uh, and it works very well. It's not a bad plate of food, that, Graham. Chef. You've got some powerful, powerful hits of, of flavours on, on this. The red cabbage, I really love that, with the potatoes and the bacon. Those elements are, are all fantastic, but I'm, I'm losing the pork in such a powerful sauce. What I've got a bit of an issue with is the amount of salt. We've got salt from a pancetta crisps. There's lots of salt inside your cold cannon. However, love your scotch egg. Not a bad attempt, Graham. To be able to get feedback like that, just a buzz, and I'm not ready for it then yet, so I just want to keep going. Next is Private Chef Lewis, who has made his take on beef chasseur with sous vide fillet of beef, mushroom and tarragon puree, potato fondant, tomato fondue, and a red wine sauce. presentation I really like, apart from that massive mountain of potato, it's raw in the middle. And although you've cooked it nice and pink, it's a dry piece of meat. As a customer, I've got, I've got problems here with this dish. Yeah. The sauce is very light. There's nothing special to it. It doesn't have the body I'm expecting from a nice red wine sauce. It's nothing that's screaming amazing, something that I haven't seen before. I love the dish, uh, steak, chasseur sauce, chips. When you take that dish and deconstruct it, you want it to be better than a good steak chasseur. And unfortunately, I think you've overthought it and you've actually missed the elements of the, the chasseur flavour. The way I saw it, I thought the flavours and everything went well together, but maybe the, yeah, the potato was too big and just stupid mistakes. Yeah. Gary's cooked loin of rabbit, wrapped in a spinach and hazelnut mousse and pancetta, served with pan-seared cutlets, liver and kidneys, pickled and pureed baby carrots, a rabbit fricassee, and truffle dauphine potatoes. We may be some time, Gary. You've given us 37 things to taste. <laughs> That fricassee has the makings of something truly, truly delicious because it's creamy, it's deep, the rabbit is soft, it's almost going sweet. Your liver's cooked well, your kidneys are cooked well. You've definitely shown us what you can do and the different elements of, of the plate here. The best bit on here for me is the little rack. <laughs> the ragu has got a nice creaminess to it. You know, the pomme dauphin is nice. Lots going on. I just wish there was less on the plate. Probably the toughest hour and a half I've ever had in my life. I think if I, if I go any further, I'll, I'll keep it a wee bit simpler.
Nigel's dish is a rack of Welsh lamb with a tapenade crust, black pudding arancini, pea puree, and tomato confit, topped with a sauce Chiron. Personally, with presentation, I love it, apart from the three big arancini. One would have been more than enough. When you've got a pea puree there, a sauce Charon, black pudding, lamb and tapenade, all together, I find it a little bit tough, a little bit challenging. The lamb is really nicely cooked. I like the pea puree. The tapenade, it's too thick and it's very strong. And I have to agree with Greg, the whole plate is, is not working in harmony. The cooking of the lamb is, is nice and the, and the olive works very well. The best thing about this dish is your, is your sauce Charon. It's got a lovely flavour. Unfortunately, that sauce goes with steak sandwich and chips, not lamb. I agree with the size of the arancini. My thought process was they could have one each. I'm just a bit upset that they didn't think the dish worked. Rosanna's lamb loin is served with deep-fried sweetbreads, pickled baby onions, asparagus, pea and mint puree, and a lamb sauce. Rosanna, I really like the presentation. I'm really liking the lamb the sweetbread, the pea mint puree underneath brings a lovely freshness, the mint is lovely, it's coming through just nice at the end there. For such a young person in this industry to cook at this level is, is quite an achievement and a good job well done. You can't lose really when you've got you know, minted peas, lamb, asparagus and, and some pickled uh, baby onions on it, but it's got to be done well and I think you've done that. I love your flavours. I adore Draw those sweetbreads. They are soft with just a little fine coating around the outside. Absolutely love, love, love the flavours on that dish. I'm quite happy with my performance. I don't think I've embarrassed myself too much and hopefully the judges can see something in me. <laughs> Pretty good standard. Uh, ups and downs in the skills test. As always, the signature dish tells a different story. Um, some pretty good cooks out there. There is one chef which I thought really stood out, and that was Rosanna. I thought she cooked the, mm. the plate of the day for me. You know, she's our youngest contestant in the competition today, at least experienced than any other chef today. And I thought she did a great job in the skills test and in the signature round. Lewis, I think, had real issues with his signature dish. It was a little dry. His sauce didn't offer a great deal, and his fondant potato wasn't cooked. In a room full of decent cooks, I think Lewis looks a little out of it. Nigel, with the three bits of arancini on, on the plate, it wasn't uh, a, a balanced dish, really strong flavours that you just couldn't enjoy altogether. It wasn't a well thought out plate of food. The best bit of the dish for me was the sauce on, and it was with the wrong dish, unfortunately. Right now, we've got Rosanna going through and we've got Lewis and Nigel going out. Even though Gary's rabbit dish didn't culminate in a truly delicious plate, you've got to marvel at the work and the skill that went on there. There's no doubt a lot of skill that he showcased on this plate of food today. I think Gary is a strong contender, he's got experience, he's got the knowledge. I think that he definitely should sit there with Rosanna because I think that I would like to see more of him. Michael had a skills test that just collapsed into panic. However, his lamb with Imam Bialdi, yogurt, aubergine puree wasn't bad at all. I enjoyed some of the elements on Michael's dish. The aubergine puree with the yogurt I thought was a lovely combination. So there are things I like, but the cooking of the lamb has questions for me. I didn't think it was cooked to its best if, if I don't get through, I'm, I've done everything I can. I could have done things possibly better, but I would go away happy. I'm not sure Graham's there yet. I do, however, think he has a touch. 
and he's got a decent palate. Mm. Graham's dish, I wasn't that bowled over by the presentation. I thought he could have refined it a bit more, but I loved the way he cooked the pork. Quite like the depth of the sauce. I felt that it held the cold cannon together and the pickled cabbage. I think Graham is, is a concern on his training. Uh, and I think in the skills test, it really showed. And that worries me about a chef, especially when it comes through to the next round. If it's my time to go, it's my time to go. But hopefully, fingers crossed, and it's not, and I can get through to the next round. Graham and Michael both struggled with the skills test. Graham and Michael both gave us decent dishes in the signature dish. Which one of them do you believe is the better chef? That's the question, isn't it? Chefs, it was a fantastic battle in the kitchen today and a great competition. But unfortunately, we can only take three of you through to the quarterfinals. Our first chef leaving the competition is... Lewis. The second chef leaving the competition is... Nigel. And our final chef leaving is... Michael. Thank you. Bye, guys. Have a great time. I've come, I've tried. I've done more than a lot of people. All I can do is take, take everything away and Hopefully make myself a better person and a better chef. I'm a bit gutted, um, but hopefully I'll move on to better things. I don't think you saw the best of Nigel today, the 100% package. I think you saw the technique and the skill that I have, but I don't think you saw the combination of flavours that I can produce. Right, very well done. You're called a finalist. <laughs> it feels absolutely amazing. Um, I think the, the students will, will be off my back for a wee bit. So, um, no, amazing, uh, amazing achievement and uh, absolutely over the moon. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling very nervous for the uh, for the course finals. Obviously, the standard of chefs are gonna, is going to increase even more and I've just got to show that I, I can keep up with everyone. Yeah, I'm feeling over the moon right now, you know, just to be able to, like, pick myself back up after this, this morning's performance and, like, prove that I deserve to go through to the next round. I'm feeling very good right now. Next time, the last six professionals fight for a place in the quarter-final. My first impression is, wow. I find your dish challenging and bordering on genius.